if we don't protect our coastal resources, coastal and marine resources, time will come that uh, people will be having difficulty in uh, raising a living for, the, for their family. Basically, the country um, is a fish-eating country. So it, on average, 30 to 35 kilograms per capita per year um, is consumed. But unfortunately, the country is no longer able to supply the, that amount of fish to the fast-growing population. People are just scrambling for uh, daily, daily subsistence, then they will not uh, realize that it's their livelihood that they are draining out. 40 to 50 percent of, my, of, my, of our population depend on fishing as their livelihood. So there's need for us really to, to protect, to preserve, and maintain our coastal resources. Otherwise, uh, fisheries will collapse. So we have really to protect it. We have to defend it and we have to maintain it. Uh, we've watched fisheries decline dramatically over the last couple of decades. Um, and that trend is continuing downwards. One of the most agreed methods to actually counter this trend is to set up no-take zones within marine protected areas. One of the main reasons why MPAs became popular in the, in the beginnings of, of MPAs in the Philippines was to manage fisheries better by setting aside no-take fishing areas. And when they did this, the community saw that the, uh, the biomass of fish, you know, increased in those areas and there was some spillover to the areas outside where fishing was being allowed. The marine protected area, why it's so fantastic is it's the first time that a community actually can turn around and say, well, hang on a minute, this is the reef or the area in front of our village. Let's take control of it and let's see what happens with this area. If an MPA is set up and enforced, within about two to three years, you see a significant increase in the biomass of fish within that area. Uh, the most important uh, uh, thing that uh, in the establishment of uh, a fish sanctuary is the community, the people who are there. We will believe right from the start that the community is very vital in the success of the marine protected area because they are the ones who are there right beside the marine protected area. So they are the managers of the marine protected area. So without the community, it will not be successful, definitely. RES vision for sustainable fisheries is really creating that connection between community buy-in and conservation success, making the link between the, the aims of conservation in, in marine coastal management and getting that community support that's necessary to make it happen. RARE takes on the task of doing a campaign for a change in behaviour and making sure that this behaviour happens. Instead of uh, an NGO going into a community and introducing themselves as an NGO working with the community, RARE identifies local conservation leaders and instead works with them. I am not the major player, but I am just a facilitator uh, looking back what is better for the people in terms of uh, effective management. RARE provides a toolbox to conservation fellows and this toolbox enables conservation fellows to really carry out uh, com uh, community-based projects in natural resource management. Not only giving them the tools, but advising them through the planning process, each step of the way, kind of really just thinking through, okay, here's a problem, these are the stakeholders, what's kind of our next moves? Because the tools that we have um, with RARE is one way that um, will help the community to change behavior, uh, especially in the perspective of conservation. I think big, uh, RARE's biggest strength would be its pride program because it really hits at the heart of the community. 
at, the, at what the community would value, at uh, what is important to them. What I've seen in the community is, I've seen in their face that they are happy having RARE uh, in partnership with the local government unit in uh, introducing the conservation project. RARE Pride program, uh, the RARE Ride strategy is really working. It's very effective because, you know, it involves the whole of the community in the management of their marine protected areas. It develops in them a sense of ownership because that's a very important sense of ownership that people uh, think that they own the thing because when they own the thing, they will really protect it, they will die for it you know, to, be, to be able to succeed in their program.